All right, it is time for my Phoenix review. This is the old classic PTC wooden coaster at Knoebels, and I gotta say, after only two rides on it, I feel like I actually got a good feel for this ride. Now with Lightning Rod, that is also a wooden coaster I only got two rides on, and I really wish I would have gotten more because I feel like I would have liked it a lot more, even though it is my number two coaster I've ridden right now. But with Phoenix, I did get that good feel for it because the second ride was much better than the first one, and I'll talk about that later. But we're gonna go on and get into this review right now. So before we get into the actual coaster, I wanna talk about the surrounding area. There is literally a model of Phoenix right outside of it which i thought was really cool it was really highly detailed i feel like it's just kind of like that steel vengeance one they have at cedar point pretty much kind of like that but it's just phoenix you know so it was really really neat i really like to see that just like most of Knoebels, it is also gravel around this area. There's nice benches. There's a few little bushes and trees, but it's kind of out in the open. So you can't really see much of Phoenix because the main part of it goes out into the forest, sort of. So there are a lot of trees blocking your view of most of the ride, but you can see the lift hill and a little bit of the turnaround. So it's all good. Not enough for me to get a bunch of footage of it, but it was fine. I didn't have to deal with it that much. So, walking into Phoenix, of course, this day I went, it was a Sunday, so I had to do the ticket system, which got really annoying, but it was all good. So, you give them your ticket, you walk up, and this station is really, really unique. It's very cool because it's kind of slanted. I don't know if that was just me who noticed that. I feel like I'm being weird right now, but yeah, this was a slanted station. It's kind of going downwards. And they were only running one train that day, so that kind of sucked. Operations were going a little slower just because of that. But, however, it wasn't that crowded. And may I just say, the lightning fast operations on this coaster were insane. They were dispatching this train in like 30 seconds, maybe even less. It was crazy. It was almost Fury 3 to 5 level. It was great. They were doing such a good job, so it wasn't that big of a deal at all. I was still having to wait like 15 to 20 minutes, though, so that kind of sucked. But it was all good. My first ride on Phoenix, it was was pretty dead in that station I got first car row three and then the second ride I had to wait about 15 or 20 minutes which I got second to back I believe so lines weren't absolutely horrible but you know it could have been better step into your trains and yes this has the buzz bars these things are amazing no restraint no seat belt just buzz bars it is awesome these trains are great probably my favorite restraint because it is no restraint right yeah so you start your ride with a little turn into a tunnel, which I thought this was really cool and unique. I had known for years that this thing had a tunnel. However, when I was in the moment, I kind of forgot about it because I was just so excited that I was actually riding Phoenix. So I was like, oh yeah, this thing has a tunnel, that's cool. It's pitch black dark for about eh, 10 or 15 seconds. And then you come out, go up that lift hill, which is surprisingly kind of fast. And you get to that top and then comes the drop. Now, is this drop bad? No. Is it great? No. It's kind of mediocre, but the thing is, it literally has buzz bars, so even if you're in the very front row, you're going to come out of your seat a little bit on that drop and kind of come forward in the train. If you're in the back, you just get kind of whipped over it, you know? It's really good. You definitely come out of your seat. It's nothing insane, but the buzz bars really help. Like my friend Dylan, Dirty Coaster, said, Phoenix is basically an okay wooden coaster turned into a great ride with buzz bars. That's literally what this is. So anyway, you hit the bottom, feel some nice little positives there. And once you hit the top of that first turnaround, if you are in the front, you go floating out of your seat. You are literally in the air. You're not even touching that seat. It is so crazy. That was the first moment when I was like, yep, I see why people love this ride now. Now, it wasn't a ejector, but you definitely are just floating straight out of your seat. You're not even touching it. You're literally hovering out of your seat. It is one of the craziest feelings ever. Like, it's just insane. If you're in the back rows, of course, you're not going to feel it that much, but you'll definitely get pulled up there. Go around that turnaround, which gives some really nice laterals, almost on twister lateral level. I was surprised. They were really cool. And you take that second little dip down that drop. Again, front row, you're not going to feel it quite as much, but in the back, you get whipped straight out of that thing. It's really aggressive. And then hit these two little airtime humps, which they were good. I mean, they're kind of floaty. You don't come out of your seat as hard as you would at the end, but they're okay. You definitely get some airtime there. And then come up and do your second turnaround where you're going to get some more lats. It's really strong here. I got to say, this ride had some really impressive laterals. I was surprised how good they were. They were almost as good as twisters, and they were just overall really good, you know? But anyway, you're going to take your third little dip off of these turnarounds, and this is the weakest of the three because it is really small. But again, in that back row, it just whips you straight over it, and because of the buzz bars, you're going to come out of your seat really far. After this, you're going to kind of hit a double up and then a double down all combined into one. 
The double up portion is not very strong at all. I mean, front row, you kind of feel it. Back row, it's just kind of dragging you. But the double down, it doesn't matter where you're sitting. You're getting pulled over that thing. You're definitely feeling the air there. And you will come into the final turnaround section, which is surprisingly the strongest of the lateral turnarounds. It was really intense there. And this is where you come to the end of the ride. This is the finale, the big portion that everyone talks about, which is the final four back-to-back -back airtime hills. And they get stronger as they go on. You are just popping out of your seat like crazy. The ejector is fantastic. You are really touching that buzz bar. It's just flinging you up to the top of those buzz bars. You're not even touching the seat. It is the craziest feeling. So much fun. The second time around when I was in the back, it felt a little stronger. But with that first time around, it was still really good. However, the back row, man, it's just crazy. Then you're going to pull up into the final little turnaround, which you kind of hit the brakes throughout and pull back into the station. So that is Phoenix for you. It is based off of a lot of airtime, some really weird floaty moments where you're touching the top of the bus bar. Is it a overrated ride? You know, I'm gonna go out and say this real quick. I think it is a tad overrated. It is still great though. It is an amazing coaster. It is in my top 10 for sure. Definitely not top five because if you know what my top five is, you know it's gonna be really hard for anything to touch that. But it is definitely in my top 10. Where? I'm not gonna say that yet. But Phoenix is not a bad ride. It is great. It is easily the best ride at Knobles. Such a fun experience. Again, like I said, if you're in the front rows, that floaty feeling where you're just hovering out of your seat is amazing. It is so weird. If you're in the back rows, you're getting all that ejector at the end of the ride. The finale is really what carries this ride into my top 10. But I just don't really see how some people can call this one of the best wooden coasters in the world. Like, even the Golden Ticket Awards, I believe it won Best in the World at one time. Like, yeah, it's really fun. It's a great ride. The airtime is crazy. But there was nothing on that ride that just was like, wow, that's top 25 in the world or anything. You know what I mean? I loved Phoenix. I really, really did. But I just don't understand how some people can call this one of the best wedding coasters in the world. So, for Phoenix's final score, I'm going to be giving it an 8.5 out of 10. I feel like if I would have rode this coaster more, I would have given it a way higher score. In fact, maybe even like a 9 or a 9.5. But I need to ride this coaster more before I can fully give it that kind of score. The only thing that's not giving it a perfect 10 is the fact that I feel like people hype this thing up a lot. I still loved it. It was great. In fact, I didn't even find it as overrated as some people do. Like Ohio Valley Coasters, they found this thing extremely overrated and kind of hated it or something. Like, no, it's not even that bad. This is a great ride. I don't see how you can even hate it that much. I just think it wasn't as deserving as a number one Woody as some people do. And I think that's the general consensus with people these days. They don't find Phoenix the greatest thing in the world, but it's still an amazing ride. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Post your comments down in the section below. What do you think of Phoenix at Knobles? Do you find it overrated? Do you find it well rated? Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, Coaster fans, I will see you later.